about this first match in a second. Let's throw it down to Justin Roberts. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Each this person from East Palo Alto, California, weighing 270 pounds, Power House Hobbs. Paul, no matter who he's in the ring with, there's a very good chance that this man has the strength advantage. Oh, Power House Hobbs is a lot in name. The name can tell you what this person's about. If his name was Speedy Hobbs, we'd try to say he's kind of fast. His name's Powerhouse Hobbs. Look at him. He's a powerhouse. He absolutely is, and he has Hook of Team Taz in his corner. So what does that say about Hook's name? <laughs> well, hook and cover, I guess. And his opponent, Danny Adams. D Dan Adams. Oh, there's Tony. Oh, he got in really good shape really fast. <laughs> oh, low ball. Low for uncalled for that keto diet works he's got the dad socks on he's got the dad shorts well i don't think that's funny because i'm a dad i don't dress goofy like that oh, As, oh, you've got a very nice hat on today yeah i do i'm stylish he took his he knocked his glasses off and he put them back on yeah well hobbs ain't afraid to hit a man with glasses apparently he'll turn them into contact lenses elbow strike by dan adams but Hobbs grabs him by the throat, sends oh Adams into the corner. Whoa! Well, there went your glasses, Dad. <laughs> and there may not be another Father's Day for this guy. Powerhouse Hobbs, for as strong as he is, his mean streak matches it. Well, here's the thing for Hobbs. This isn't really a contest for Hobbs. I mean, this, right, this guy right now is a warm body that eventually, when Hobbs decides, is going to get pinned. This is like an exercise ball in the gym. One you throw around, work on your strength and condition, maybe your cardio, or just your bad attitude, which Hobbs is exemplifying right now. He's just a powerhouse imposing his will. He looks like an animal playing with his food is what yeah, he looks exactly. like. Exactly. Good got, call. He's got Adams on the shoulder. Could be looking to do a little town business right there. Plants Adams and whoa. Oh, oh that's goodness. just a dirty move. Dad thought the movie was over, but the bad man's still in charge. Oh, my goodness. This is not going to end well for the dad. You got a real easy choice, Dad. Start tapping that wrist. Tap out. Now, Run. Just how sadistic is Will Hobbs and Team Taz? Look at the torture rack just breaking the spine of Dan Adams. And the winner of this match, Power House Hobbs. Just raise his hand so he can leave. Mark, he didn't need to do that, but oh, Powerhouse come Hobbs. On. Do you see that? Do you see Hook just walk over like so much trash on the bottom of his shoe? I'm telling you, Powerhouse and Hobbs, those two kids have bad attitudes. You can back it up. There we see the town business. He could have won it there, but Mark, I think Hobbs wanted to send a message to the rest of the locker room. Yeah, I think a lot of people right now are going, wow, I'm going to make sure that if I ever get him down, I got to keep him down. If. How are you going to stop some LA Powerhouse Hobbs? Some people ain't meant to be stopped. Powerhouse Hobbs victorious here in our opening contest. Up next on AEW Dark Elevation, the Butcher and the Blade take on Chuck Taylor and Wheeler Yuta. The tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, being accompanied by the Bunny from Buffalo, New York, at a combined weight of 501 pounds, the Butcher and the Blade. Well, the Butcher and the Blade making their return to tag team action here in AEW. It was a couple months out of action due to injury, but Butcher and Blade are back in the step, and we'll see if there's any ring rust. As Blade very nearly taking out one of our cameramen, Mark. I saw that. I, I, he might have to get his get back in the middle of this match. <laughs> That's right. I am Excalibur joined, actually nestled in between the world's strongest man, the world's largest athlete. What a, what a funny place to find myself. Be and careful. Our opponents had a combined weight of 416 pounds. The team of Wheeler Yuta and Chuck Taylor. 
Well, it's great to join you here, uh, Paul. Tony Schiavone off doing his uh, his interview lead duties. Yeah, Tony Schiavone wears many hats here at AEW. It's unique to be actually sitting down here with you because most of the time I have that luxury of you being in my ear on my headset, helping me so I sound like I know what I'm talking about. So if I'm really quiet now, we know why. Speaking of hats, that's a nice hat you got on there, that sir. That is very nice. It ain't going to fit you. Stop. <laughs> Dang it. You see the new Best Friends T-shirt available right now at shopaew.com. Wheeler Yuta and Chuck Taylor. I like it. Do they have that in grown-up sizes? <laughs> no, only, only Husky Youth Mediums. <laughs> Husky youth <laughs> medium, I love it. Uh, and the blade starts off. You talk about the butcher and the blade been absent for a while, but they are two of top AEW's mercenaries. Let's call it like it is. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Mark, they they have aligned themselves with Matt Hardy, the Hardy family office, and really since then things have really looked up for Butcher and Blade. Well, I mean, Matt Hardy has a, a knack for taking a talent and making it better, and he, he's done that with these guys. As we see Chuck Taylor get taken down off his feet by the blade, the shoulder tackle. Kentucky gentleman. I always loved that. I never understood what the Kentucky gentleman meant. Does he open doors? Is he very chivalrous? I think it's it's actually a little tongue in cheek because he's not that gentlemanly. I don't know how much time you spent around Chuck Taylor. Yeah, maybe that's a disconnect then. Maybe that's why it's a disconnect. You know? However, this young man of very fine standing, Wheeler Yuta, the protege of Chuck Taylor and Orange Cassidy. Teamwork. Tremendous athletic ability. Here's a cover. Barely a one count from referee Rick Knox. Blade says, not today, kid. And there we see the blade digging the fingers and the eyes, tagging out to Big Butch. Such an effective old school maneuver, too. Guy can't fight if he can't see. And Mark, you've had a size advantage on your opponents a time or two, Paul, as well. But Mark, what does Wheeler Yuta need to do to neutralize Butcher's well, size? He's going to definitely have to be on his horse. He's going to have to move fast and things like that, show athleticism and catch him off guard. He did exactly what you said right in the last second. And but right there is a classic mistake I think that Wheeler Yuta made. As Blade dove back into the bottom ropes, that's a perfect opportunity for Wheeler Yuta to seize on Butcher, because Butcher's on the ground. Don't let him get up. Get him grounded, keep him grounded. You got Yuta. size advantage and you're losing size advantage, you got to keep the guy cut down. You Take away that advantage. Yeah, yeah. We saw Wheeler Yuta use his speed there to get that drop kick or to land that drop kick on the butcher and then the assist from Chuck Taylor the suplex too much mustard on the hot dog you better stay on it yeah get, that's another thing too we talk about tag team isolation you want to isolate your opponents in your corner cut that ring diagonally in half do your work on your side right now even though Chuck Taylor's on the offensive he's too deep in enemy territory oh the Butcher just struck Chuck Taylor. Wow, with that low cross body. And Chuck Taylor, I think a little disoriented, ac accidentally rolling to the Butcher and Blades corner. Yeah, uh, look, see, he, instinctively, he wanted to get to the closest corner. Had he had the ring cut off, he would have been in, in, in a good corner. Right now, he's in enemy territory. And, and that's, a, oh my God, what an awesome move. The blade just drew the referee to him. and. All kind of foolishness was going on behind the referees. Back. That's experience tag team work, though, Mark. You yeah, know that. Well, hell, right. We've done that. You're right. You know, you get the zebra looking the other way, you can do whatever you want. And I mean, really, that might speak to the the relative inexperience of Wheeler Yuta, a little little hot-headed, impetuous, and doing his partner a disservice by distracting the referee's attention. Well, sometimes with youth, you rely too much on exuberance and athletic ability. Here's cover. a cover. Two. Exuberance and athletic ability. When you get more experienced, you realize those things are important, but also working smart is much more important. The, wow. the Blade and the Butcher have isolated Chuck Taylor in the ring, cutting it in half, metaphorically, not physically. Yeah, I, no, but that's entire well, psychology, right, Mark? Yeah, it is. You look at those look at those new tights that the Butcher's got. You know, it speaks for itself. He's got a bloody Butcher knife on the back. Yeah, the butcher's tights. Yeah, I was looking at the blades tights. I was like, how does he put them on? The butter? <laughs> a lot of oil. Carefully. I, I guess, I guess. Chuck I Taylor know. back in the blade into the ropes. Reversal by Blade in the back elbow. Takes Chuck Taylor off of his feet. Very effective wrestling by the blade. No wasted movement on his part. Yeah, economy of motion. Does, malicious intent. Malicious intent. And, effective. And you, uh -oh. you said it earlier. These, these men, not good. Butcher and Blade, they are mercenaries. And Matt Hardy has had his share, the Hardy family office has had their share of run-ins with Wheeler Yuta, Chuck Taylor, what and specifically Orange Cassidy. And oh, the butcher with the referee's attention diverted once again, taking advantage. 
Now, I thought Blade did that on purpose to draw the ref's attention because I thought he was to give Bunny a chance for a sneak attack because she gets involved quite heavily in this tag team. It's a big cover here. Cover here by the Blade. Two. No. Paul, you mentioned the Bunny. Have you looked into her eyes before? No, I try not to. I like being able to sleep at night. Jeez. Yeah, you, she scares the bejesus out of me. I'm good. Just dark pools. Yeah. If I pass her in the hallway, I put my face in my phone and act like I'm doing something important. You do that to me, too. Well, different reasons. For different reasons. <laughs> Side headlock here by the blade. Slowing things down. Controlling that tempo, controlling that momentum. Right now, Chuck Taylor has to work very hard just to get a breath, let alone be in some kind of an offensive striking position. You Blade's have, controlling everything right now. You have to imagine there will be a bonus for Butcher and Blade in their future from Matt Hardy if they are able to put away Chuck Taylor and Wheeler Yuta, but the soul food. Love soul food. May so have sweet. turned the tables. Yuta springboard in, diving cross body by Wheeler Yuta. And he's got a lot of pent up front frustration from the outside. That big headbutt out of the corner. Looking for the German suplex. Might have been a little bit too much to chew off there on the blade. Oh, Yuta hanging out to that bottom rope. There's the, There's the German. And nice. he, he planted blade high on the shoulders. Can he get Butcher up? He can! Oh, my goodness. Tremendous show of strength by Wheeler Yuta. Listen to the crowd. Wheeler Yuta, the overhand chop and the tag out to Chuck Taylor. Yuta climbing up. Whoa, goes off the top and takes out the butcher on the outside. I don't know who got the worst end of that dive. Chuck Taylor, he's done the deal. The Falcon Arrow, the cover, no. I question that cover. I don't know if Blade's shoulders were all the way down on that. I think the zebra is in a bad counting position. Yeah, Chuck like the shoulders Taylor. are up on that. That shouldn't even been a count. Chuck Taylor with the blade in the corner, charging in, went for the back elbow. Oh, rising knee strike, and Yuta just blind tagged himself in. Smart tag team move. Wheeler, Yuta, the splash off the top. Boy, that was heavy. Far leg is hooked, and no. Oh, and the save. That's good tag team work. Protect your partner at all times. Chuck Taylor sending the butcher to the outside. Is he going for a plancha? He's sizing Butcher up, and oh, there's oh. the bunny. There's the influence of the bunny on the outside, Mark. Yep, Move the Butcher right out of the way. Man, I got to say, this time off for the, for the Butcher has been really good. Oh, spinning tombstone pile driver by the blade. The he tag. just wrapped him up and called that done. Man, that looked like the, the steak was, in, was well done. Oh, no, instead they're going to drag the lake. The Butcher covers and gets the win. Butcher looks great, man. The blade. Butcher looks great, and the blade as sharp as ever. It was a very effective tag team. It's good to see these guys competing again. Such a great tag team. There's the soulless one herself, the bunny. Check out the replay here. Big high frost splash by Wheeler Yuta. And there and we they see. got to drag the lake. How apropos, because there's nothing but a dead body getting pinned. That was the end, and you know somewhere, the leader of the Hardy family office, Matt Hardy, is smiling to see the Butcher and the Blade victorious here tonight. <laughs> wow. Elite general manager, huh? The greatest wrestler of all time, getting his hands on his own professional wrestling game where I create the cards. This is my universe. We have a challenger online. What would a layman know about professional wrestling, huh? Is there uh, clearly some bugs in the system or something? I'm not, I don't lose. I've got every belt in the universe. How am I losing in this game? Think you have what it takes? Prove it with AEW Elite General Manager. Draft your favorite AEW wrestlers and book your own shows from week to week. Download AEW Elite General Manager, available now on iOS and Android. Up next, the former AEW Women's World Champion, Riho, takes on Tootie Lin one-on-one. -on -one. Japan, Riho! 
Always great to see Riho in action here in AEW. It's tough for her because she splits her time between Japan and the United States. So it's really our pleasure to have her back here, Paul. Big time international competitor. She's actually our first AEW Women's Champion. That's right, she was Riho. So that shows she started it all for the women's division here in AEW. It was on the debut episode of AEW Dynamite, October 2nd, 2019. Riho defeated Nyla Rose to be crowned the inaugural AEW Women's World Champion. Our opponent from St. Louis, Missouri, Tootie Lynn. Judy Lynn making her in-ring debut here in AEW. And one of the most athletic people you're gonna see and is a black belt, a registered black belt. Judy Lynn is. Yes. All right. Ooh, there we see that high kick. Riho sensing the danger, grabs the side headlock, trying to neutralize the striking advantage of Judy Lynn. The back elbow takes Riho. Did you hear the thud on uh, that back elbow? Cover? Yeah, the cover. I did. Whoa. Matrix. And Riho charges in. Telegraph that a little bit. She yeah. did out palm yeah. strikes on the sternum, then body shots, and then Judy Lynch squaring Riho up for a kick, taking the former AEW Women's World Champion off her feet. And speaking of the AEW Women's World Championship, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD, will defend the Women's World Championship this Saturday night at Full Gear against the top contender, Ty Conti. All that, so much more, Full Gear. Live this Saturday night, November 13th, on pay-per-view. Rio coming in, looks for the area code, shot the tiger faint kick, whatever you want to call it. She hit it right on the money, the cover. Two, no, 2D Lynn kicking out, Mark. Great resilience by 2D Lynn. That was a heck of a maneuver. Both those shins caught her flush right in the forehead and the face. Yeah, that was one of those resilience things. She's got a, a, a tough chin if you in my neighborhood. Got a good gut check. Oh, yeah. Big time elbow strike there from Tootie Lynn. Riho, despite her young age, highly experienced, been wrestling since nine years old. Oh, cover here by Tootie Lynn after the kick. Oh, man, that was, that, close. Was that, was almost, that was almost an upset. That would have been a huge upset if Tootie Lynn were able to pull it off. I mean, Tootie Lynn in the driver's seat here. Riho still looks to be reeling a little bit, too. Well, that's one of the things that Riho's done since I've been here and watched her compete. She does get herself in a lot of trouble, but she manages to get herself out of trouble, too. Yeah, she's she tough. She plays there's her game smile. and stays steady. And there's that smile. Rio, you got to love somebody to smile. She's to the top, Paul. She's on the top. You know what happens now. Diving oh, foot stops wow. avoided by Tootie Lynn, but Riho rolled through, closes the distance, has the full Nelson maybe think of Dragon Suplex. Nope, standing switch by Tootie Lynn. Riho. Rolls through, and there's the oh, foot there's stomp. The stomp. I love that focus to get that foot stop in. And that's that's the uh, the wrestling resume of Riho, having the wherewithal to hit it. The Northern Light suplex. Wow, that's a big maneuver for Rio too. That's a wonder that wasn't a three count. Great job by Rio, uh, Judy to kick out from Rio's move. The Northern Light suplex. Rio. Got her hips underneath her opponent, popped them up and flipped her over. And now Riho, the oh, it's diving just... stomp off the top. You can count all through the holidays. It's over. Riho hit the stomp and gets the win. Yeah, the leader get... of this match. Riho. When you get the win knocked out of you that solid, it's hard to do anything but try to catch your breath, let alone kick out. We've seen Riho time and time again, overcoming the odds, taking down larger opponents, and she continues to do so here tonight on Dark Elevation. And Mark, here we see that big diving foot stomp. Tootie Lynn got basically cut in half. Man, it was unbelievable to see her recover that quickly. Rejo victorious here tonight. Big Money Matt Hardy takes on Dean Alexander next on Dark Elevation. The following contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from the Hardy compound in Cameron, North Carolina. Weighing 221 pounds, Matt Hardy. Big money, Matt Hardy. Getting all the pyro here tonight. Man, I just lost two eyebrows. <laughs> Jeez. 
Now we saw the Hardy family office pick up a victory earlier tonight. Butcher and the Blade victorious over Chuck Taylor, Wheeler, Yuta. Can Matt Hardy follow in their footsteps? Well, you saw him smiling. His opponent from Kansas City, Kansas, Dean Alexander. Dean Alexander has a tough test. Ahead of him is Matt Hardy grabbing a microphone. What's your name? My name's Dean Alexander, and I'm from Kansas City, baby. I didn't ask all that. More importantly, what's my name? You're Matt Hardy. You may know my name, but you obviously do not know who I am. I am the infamous Big Money Matt Hardy. And tonight, after I kick your ass in this match, you will say my name with reverence. Well, man, man, he took him to church on that one, reverence. No shortage of confidence from big money Matt Hardy as he and Dean Alexander tie it up center of the ring. Dean Alexander, though, turns things around on Matt Hardy. It's hard to talk if those lips are pressed shut. True that. Matt Hardy grabs the side headlock. Probably control the tempo. Dean Alexander is a pretty strong looking athlete. He certainly is. I mean, we've seen him in action a couple times here on Dark and Elevation before. As Matt Hardy is driving the face of Alexander into the turnbuckle pads. Oh, well, Matt Hardy's smart enough. Once he gets his foot on the gas, he's not going to take it off. No, he's going to have the imprint of that AEW that's in the corner on his face if he don't get his stuff together. And speaking of not taking his foot off the gas, Paul, Matt Hardy has continued to set his sights on freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. So much animosity between those two men. You gotta be careful when you get that. It gets that personal, because then you can start making mistakes. And I would hate to see someone of Matt Hardy's career, tenure, legendary accomplishments, out of bad attitude, make a silly mistake. Dean Alexander, the clothesline, Man. takes down Matt Hardy, the back elbow, and Dean Alexander going, doing a good job of surprising Matt Hardy here in this match. They hit him with that KC masterpiece. <laughs> but that's the thing about Matt Hardy, though. That guy's got more tricks in the back. Oh, 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 people even have, what a bump. That hurt several times. Man. Dean Alexander's face was rammed into the turnbuckle. His shoulder struck the ring post and then his, his body hit the steps on the way down. That was a terrible landing, and Matt Hardy really turning the tables here. That's a Matt Hardy trifecta right there. You got the head, the shoulder, and the spine. Knees and toes as well. Oh. <laughs> and he just hit him in the throat with that elbow, and Dean is still clutching at his throat. Well, we know to be a successful in this business, as long as Matt Hardy has it somewhere, you have to get mean. Oh, the catapult! Wow. Right across the throat. See right there? Matt Hardy's smart. Right now, Dean Alexander's finding it hard to breathe, to take in a full breath of air, to help your muscles recruit, to stay strong. Matt Hardy's eliminating that advantage. Yeah, and he followed it up from the elbow to the throat, right with the rope to the throat. Right. And all part of his plan. Now where is Dean Alexander right now? The struggling to breathe and about to go to sleep. The sleeper locked in. Dean, though, he's fading. Oh, but Hardy. Think he let go a little early on that one. Thought he had him. Yeah, I think maybe maybe Dean was playing possum a little bit. And now goes back behind Hardy. He's got him up. It's the neck breaker. Oh, We're gonna upset goodness. the making here. Hometown. Come on, Dean. Dig deep, Dean. Come there's on, been Dean. There's worse things. There's been stranger things that's happened. Dean Alexander, he can't afford. He's got the crowd behind him. He's got to keep moving. Yeah, he can't afford to, to let up. He can't afford to let Matt Hardy back into this match, and that's oh, exactly what happened. Right. Dean Alexander. Was, just knocked that foot off the top turnbuckle. Yeah, he started acknowledging the crowd. Matt Hardy, such a savvy veteran. He sensed what was happening, and he stopped the momentum of Alexander. Yes, he did. Sometimes you may not know what to do. You just know you got to do something, and Matt was smart enough to know that he needed to do something in that situation and change the whole momentum right now. Now the superplex, oh, bringing Dean Alexander down to earth the hard way. Every time I have one of those, I broke the damn ring. I broke the ring with you too, Mark. Yeah, unfortunately, I took the worst Hardy, end of that. Hardy looking for the leech here. The leech, what an appropriate finisher name. 
He's got it locked in. Dean Alexander taps out. Yeah, it didn't matter. He had those Kansas City Chiefs colors on. That he took a loss. Match. Matt Hardy. And Matt Hardy, after the after concentrating on the windpipe of Dean Alexander, cut off all the airflow with the leech to pick up the victory here tonight on Dark Elevation. Big time tag team matchup coming up next. Nyla Rose and Emi Sakura with Vicky Guerrero and the Killer Queens take on Ryo Mizunami and Ruby Soho. This is a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied by Vicky Guerrero, May Saruga, and Lulu Pencil, the team of Emi Sakura and the native beast, Nyla Rose. While you talk about an effective tag team in the women's division, Nyla Rose and Emi Sakura. Well, I don't think anybody anticipated Nyla and Emi to work together so well, but they seem to have found common cause. What a parade of folks. Yeah. Emi Sakura adding to her, her court attendance, not only with Lulu Pencil in her corner, but now May Saruga, one of Emi's prized pupils. A regular not only in uh, Tokyo Joshi Pro, but also Choco Pro. A regular in the Ichigaya Chocolate Square. And Nyla Rose, of course, former AEW Women's World Champion and perhaps future inaugural TBS champion. Their opponents, the team of Rio Mizunami and Ruby Soho. And Rio Mizunami and Ruby Soho. Look at the glitz and glam. Oh, it's the battle of the gear right here. I mean, both these girls have amazing gear. Very flashy, very stylish. I love Rio Mizunami's gear. It reminds me of a throwback to like Macho Man, Randy Savage with that gear. And their personalities match. Now, Rio Mizunami, known as Aniki, a Japanese term for, you know, a trusted mentor or advisor. And really, I mean, that's, that's what she's become to so many competitors here in the, in the women's locker room at AEW. And she and Nyla Rose picking up right where they left off from last time, Paul. Yeah, they, they just love to trade back and forth like that. Rio loves to get in that exchange. Mm. Show that power, show that toughness. And Nyla Rose, and we don't have to talk strength. about how strong and tough Nyla Rose is. Earlier this year, the conclusion of the AEW Women's World Championship Eliminator Tournament. Nyla Rose advanced from the U.S. bracket to the finals. Ryo Mizunami advanced from the Japanese side of the bracket. In, Ni Nyla. Interesting, time, interesting teamwork there, sorry. Yeah, that's... <laughs> I've never, that threw me off. I never picked up a partner to have them drop kick another one. I, 
Emmy, Emmy Sakura was looking for the Queen's Gambit, trying to make a quick end to this. But Real Mizunami anticipated and countered out of it. Now Wastelock here by Ruby Soho. Sends Emmy Sakura into the ropes and the elbow strike right between the shoulder blades. Oh, oh look. Almost. Emmy coming through the, looks like a flatliner. And she's getting her, her court attendance to get the crowd here in Independence, Missouri. Well, smart. You bring enough people for you, they can start the cadence. That's true, yeah. Like... And the charge in the corner. The... Oh, wow, that My folded. My Lord. Wow. And <laughs> everybody wow. gets what a camera. Is, what is going on? Poor Lulu Pence is going to get mad one day and whip all of them. I'm telling you. Hey, it's always the quiet it's ones. It's always the quiet ones. Nyla Rose with a handful of hair, Ruby Soho, but Ruby ripping the chest of Nyla with those chops. Nyla sending, oh, look at that, Vicky Guerrero swiping at the boot of Ruby Soho. Oh my goodness, such quickness. Massive spine buster. How tough is Ruby Soho to kick out of that? Wow. Ruby Soho will be facing Chris Statlander in the quarterfinal round of the TBS Championship Tournament. Can't wait for that match. We will see a new champion crowned here in the coming weeks in AEW. She can't take too many more suplexes like that because that's going to affect her going forward. Yeah, Ruby, thinking what you were saying, Mark, she escaped out, got the tag to real Mizunami, and now Mizunami and Nyla. Hey, there's no tag here. Do your job, ref. Come on. Double Irish whip, double clothesline attempted. Oh, Mizunami sent Nyla into Emi Sakura and the spear. Huge spear by Rio Mizunami. Little misdirect, love it. Uh-oh, the crowd is up. And Ruby Soho, the legal member of her team, the elbow strike, the clothesline from Mizunami, and Ruby oh. thrown in the force of Rio with the spear. Great teamwork here. This makeshift tag team is really doing a good job against Nyla Rose neutralizing the strength advantage, Paul. That's a tough thing to neutralize with Nyla Rose, the native beast, because she offsets everything so quickly. One maneuver, she changes the whole tempo. Definitely one of the top powerhouses in the AEW women's division. Yeah, she can do everything right and still beat you. You can do everything right and she can beat you. That's true. That's not a good feeling when you do everything right and still get beat. Oh, look at that. Oh, my Reversal power. by Nyla Rose. That tore Rio's head off. Yeah, that was a half half straight jacket into the neck breaker. Great job by Nyla Rose putting Rio Mizunami She's down. She's not, guys. And yeah, here's the thing that where Nyla Rose goes to the top, shows that athleticism. Nyla springing up to the top with ease, coming oh. down the scent on Atomico, nobody home. And this is the opportunity Mizunami needed. She makes the tag, as does Nyla. Kick to the midsection, doubles over Emi Sakura. The block by... Oh, look at this. Emi Sakura going for the Queen's Gambit. Ruby, quick roll up. The reversal. Oh, so close. But Ruby Soho looking to press the advantage. Emi Sakura sends Ruby into the ropes. Oh, high kick across the jaw from Ruby. Mesa Ruga sweeps up the legs. And look at this, Mahi Stroll. La Mahi Stroll, two, no! Ruby staying in this fight. Blocks, or counters the Lariat into the backslide. And whoa, you saw how Ruby tried to pin the wrists as well as the shoulders. Oh, no future! That ba backwards kick from Ruby scores the win! To a thousand. Well, there's a lot of action going on there. That's why I had to lay out. <laughs> the team of Rio Mizunami. So Excalibur, I'm glad you knew what that was called. <laughs> Man, too, I was in awe over here. I was just oh, like, wait a second, Nyla oh, Rose. The? Oh, that's uncalled for. Pulling Rio Mizunami out of the ring, and Mesa Ruga and Lulu Pencil getting up in the face of Ruby Soho. Ruby. Oh, she didn't. It was just a distraction. Just a distraction. God. Ru Ruby didn't realize Nyla Rose was in the ring. And the Queen's Gambit from Emi Sakura. It's so many of them. It's like Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. 
Here we go. Business is just about to pick up. Chris Statlander with the chair in hand. Chris Statlander will actually face Ruby Soho in the TBS Championship Tournament, but Statlander coming to her future opponent's aid. Well, that just shows class. Great shows class. Smarts on Chris Statlander's part to bring a chair, too. <laughs> so the best way to run off a of posse is to bring an equalizer. Great class, great sportsmanship shown by Chris Stat. Oh, wait a second. It's these two, over. these two will meet in the quarterfinals to determine who advances in the TBS Championship Tournament. And guys, I can't wait for that one. Wednesday on TNT. I'm gonna let my anger out right now. The pressure is building. I do what I want! Desperation is setting in. I will be champion! What will happen on the last Dynamite before full gear? You better hold on tight to it. AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite, live at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on TNT. It's main event time and it's gonna be huge. Eight-man tag team match. Dark Order's Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, John Silver, and Alex Reynolds take on the acclaimed and 2.0. When the Dark Order. This is an eight-man tag team match set for one fall. With a 20-minute time limit. Introduce the first Evil Uno, Stu Grayson, Alex Reynolds, and John Silver. Dark! Order. Coming up this Saturday night, live on pay-per-view, it is Full Gear, the main event, the long-awaited AEW World Championship title match. Kenny Omega defends against Hangman Adam Page, and Paul, you know who the Dark Order is gonna be pulling for Saturday. Absolutely, I'm just so happy to see that the Dark Order has managed to put their differences aside, get back together as that solid unit that they are, and back their guy, Hangman Adam Page, Kenny Omega is up for one hell of a fight coming this Saturday. A great show of force here by the Dark Order. They're gonna have their work cut out for them here tonight. Their opponents 2.0 and the Acclaim. Yeah. Yo. Listen. Listen. What? Listen. What? Yeah. 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 Hey. The Acclaim. We're back in the zone. We're never falling off like Pat Mahomes. The Dark Order puts fans to sleep. Y'all about to have a worse year than the Chiefs. Yo, we're so amazing. Y'all are like the barbecue here, overrated. Oh, wow. And y'all should go hiding. We're making y'all poop your pants like Joe Biden. Wow. Wow, he just managed to upset everybody again. have 2.0. My, uh, my question to you is, when you insult a city's barbecue, you're looking for a fight. Yeah, I, you know what? You, you can, can talk about somebody's mama, you can talk about somebody's family. You can't talk about some city's barbecue. You can talk about the Chiefs all you want to. When you when you attack the barbecue in the city that the... I'm offended. Oh, I, I'm, I might hit the ring. I might hit the barbecue joint so yeah, much. Well, support. yeah, let, let's go do that. Let's go show our support. You know, and I'm just uh, getting shit. That's right. So, barbecue is so, so, our support. Support local businesses. That's the message here. Yeah. Come on, next guy. Support local you know barbecue. You hey, you hang around us. We'll put some weight on you. I'm How much for one rib? That's actually what I'm going to do tomorrow for lunch. Anthony Bowens, Evil Uno starting things off for their respective sides. Love Evil Uno. This guy just is all style and charm. He's there. always got a smile on his face. He always does. Anthony Bowens isn't about playing. Anthony Bowens and he... <laughs> <laughs> Just did his whole thing right back to him. That's evil Uno. <laughs> Uno backs Bowens into the ropes. Bowens come back, shoulder tackle. Big Uno. shoulder tackle. Uno Ooh. drives Bowens the in. match. Coming back and forth with the shoulder tackles. Two big strong guys, who's gonna give? Uno. Oh. Changes directions and takes ah. Bowens off his feet. There you go. Might have been a veteran move there, huh? Sometimes you got to use your brain, not brawn. There Uno you go. Steps over the trip. 
Bowens with the back elbow attempt. Uno puts on the brake, swing and a miss. Bowens, swing of his, oh, oh! Both men thinking headbutt and neck cracked head like a pair of rams. Well, it's like they psychically connected after running those ropes together. Max Caster. Easy for me to say, sorry. <laughs> Come in, comes in, knee lift to the midsection of Reynolds. But shoulder tackle by the Dark Order. And 2.0. Jeff Parker on your left, Big Magic Matt Lee on your right. Inside the ring with the Dark Order contingent. But the reversal. And Uno, or excuse me, Grayson and Silver take down 2.0. And Colt Cabana getting in on the action. <laughs> Mark, we mentioned the main event of Full Gear coming up this Saturday night on pay-per-view. Hangman Adam Page challenging Kenny Omega for the AEW World Championship. Who you got in that one? Yeah, I'm going to have to go with Page. Page has been gone for a while. He He's back. He's fresh. And he's got a lot to prove. And Kenny has done it all. So let's see what happens. Well, he's done it all, but he's also beat Hangman Adam Page before. He has, but that's even more reason for Paige to step up and show the fans here at AEW that he belongs. That's a good point, too. And here's the thing, too, that was like, oh, two for the show on the barricade. Sorry, Paul. Oh, no, no, that was a great call. That kind of cut off like that's brutal. And Max Caster can win it right here. Yeah, Uno realizing it. And I would even want to pull him off. What I want to get back to talking about Kenny Omega versus Hangman Adam Page. Kenny Omega has been through some hellacious battles in the past few months. He is bad. Kenny Omega has got some bruises, some, some scars, some impacts that he's still dealing with. Hangman Adam Page is coming in with a clean head. Yeah, he's, he's been home, rested. Mario, rested, hungry. Kenny Omega, you never know. If he's been in the fire so long, he may not notice any more wounds, but... The fights that Kenny Omega has been in recently, I bet they're going to play a factor at the pay-per-view. But Paul, Kenny Omega has consistently been one of the top wrestlers, if not the top wrestler in the entire world. Diamonds are made under pressure. There's a cover here, and Kenny Omega, he thrives under pressure. PWI, they, they listed Kenny Omega as the best wrestler in the world. Oh, look at this, Alex Reynolds. Trying to go for the sunset flip, but Matt Lee makes the tag. Parker comes in, the sledge across the back of the head. Snap suplex. Parker floats over. And not only will we decide the AEW World Champion this Saturday night at Full Gear, we will decide who challenges the man that walks out of Full Gear is champion with the finals of the AEW World Championship Eliminator Tournament. Plus, the Women's World Championship will be on the line. The Tag Team World Championship. So much going on this Saturday night, live from Minneapolis, Minnesota, Full Gear on Pay Per View. Platinum Max on top. Max Caster grabs the front chancery, backs Alex Reynolds up to the corner. Reynolds trying to break the grip of Caster, but a right hand to the ribs from Anthony Bowen stops Reynolds in his tracks. Oh, meeting of the mind for the acclaim there. 2.0 gets dropped. Oh. Nobody home for Bowens. Reynolds elevates over. Caster makes the tag out to Stu Grayson. And Stu takes flight. Who said Vikings can't fly? Grayson. The senton on the apron. We've never seen Stu. Swing and a miss. Grayson, the clothesline. Nice belly to belly suplex. Grayson, oh, the kick. I didn't think he he got uh he got Matt. He didn't get Lee. all that clean, got some in the back shoulder, but oh, oh wow, what look at the power in Max Cash. But oh. look at the comeback there by Stu Grayson. The drop kick takes down Parker. He's a one-man army right now. And you listen to that ovation. John Silver, the meat man, the legal man for his side. Grayson. Oh, hard bump. Grayson met the ring apron face first, but John Silver coming in. Oh, the Gaman Geary. The cannonball on Caster. Uppercut on Matt Lee. Punk Big kick boom. on Bowens. And John Silver. He's got him. He's got all the momentum here tonight. Oh, oh. what a what a dodge by Jeff Parker. And now the leg drop off the back. Evil Uno, though, 
Recognizing the danger, the rolling elbow strike on Matt Lee. Another elbow drops Jeff Parker. Bowens, great combination offense, the thrust kick. Reynolds pops Bowens up, hits the knee on the chin. But now two for the show once again. Stu Grayson avoids the contact. Back flipping kick takes down both members of 2.0. But Max Caster comes in a well placed clothesline. Max is a big man. Deceptively big. He certainly is, but he just got elevated over the top rope by John Silver. Whoa! Wow! I felt that kick from over here. Rolling elbow strike, Enzi Gary. Stunner, German suplex. Evil Uno has Parker all hooked up. Stu Grayson on the top. The fatality! Silver covers. And Dark Order gets the win. Here he is. Dark Order. Boy, they make me want to throw up the Dark Order sign. I know it's supposed as well to not be partial. As well executed as the Dark Order was in that series of offense, Jeff Parker, let's call it like he called it. He was outnumbered. That turned from a one on one competition to a one on four. I got to call it like I see it. Thought I'm a big fan of Jeff Parker's. But in that situation, the numbers got to him. This guy took three or four finishes back to back. He doesn't have any support. Yeah, all the support was knocked down. Dark Order completely overwhelming the opposition. And we know who they will be cheering for this Saturday night, live on pay-per-view, when Hangman Adam Page challenges Kenny Omega for the AEW World Championship.